Benchside Warfare by Xander Jones. Interior Security Control Room, Day. A security guard sits in front of a bank of three security camera screens with several different views to monitor. Camera pushes in. On the desk in front sits a two-way radio and a steaming cup of hot coffee resting on top of a newspaper. The newspaper shows the photo of a Middle Eastern man being arrested. Camera continues pushing in to security screens. Exterior rural shopping mall, day. Security camera view of the mall. It's a quiet day in the small town mall with just a few other shoppers hanging around. There's a playground on the other side. Some parents supervise their younger children. A few are left to play by themselves. Interior charity store, day. Toby, eight, walks between the aisles of secondhand clothing until he arrives at the toy shelves. He sees one toy in particular, a super soaker water pistol. He picks it up, pretends to load, then aims it around the store, coming to rest on a clothing rack of waistcoats. He takes a fisherman's utility vest, puts it on, and checks out his reflection in the mirror. Perfect Han Solo impersonation. He hears a cough from the front of the store. Richard, 64, peers down the aisles to make sure Toby isn't trying to steal anything. He keeps an eye on him until he puts back the sunglasses and toy gun. Then moves back behind the counter as Toby walks past to leave the store. Exterior, rural shopping mall, day. Security camera view of the mall. Toby runs out from a nearby store towards his mother, Janet, 45, on the opposite side of the mall. She is walking very briskly with her phone to her ear. She almost bumps into Ari, 40. He has dark black hair, a trimmed beard, and wears foreign clothing that definitely couldn't be found in this mall. He sits down on a nearby bench. He places a large bag next to him reaches inside and pulls out a timetable. He checks his watch, then rolls up the timetable and places it back in the bag. In its place, he pulls out a falafel wrapped in aluminum foil. Janet is interrupted by Toby, who impatiently starts tugging at his mother's shirt. She hangs up the phone and finally obliges Toby and follows him back towards the charity store. Interior charity store, day. Richard glances up from his book as they walk past the counter. Toby directs his mother towards the toys section. Richard returns back to his book, something to do with spies and government espionage, until he's distracted by a terse voice coming from Janet. She is ushering Toby away from the super soaker water pistol. Toby isn't getting his way and begins to throw a tantrum. So she leaves him and walks out of the store. She smiles politely at Richard on the way past. Exterior rural shopping mall, day. Security camera view. Janet walks off into the news agency next door. Interior charity store, day. Toby slowly walks towards the exit, dragging his feet. Richard feels sorry for him and picks up a 50 cent toy plane from the counter and holds it out for Toby. Toby isn't sure whether to take it. Richard insists, passing it down to him. Toby shyly thanks him and leaves the store. Exterior, rural shopping mall, day. Security camera view. Toby exits the store, moving the plane about in the air. He makes his way down the footpath past Ari, who is still seated on the nearby bench, finishing his falafel. In the background, Ben and Matthias, both in their early 30s, walk past, following closely behind two women. Ben is pushing a pram, while Matthias has his gaze fixed on the bench seat where Ari is sitting. The two women, who are the partners of Ben and Matthias, call back to them to make sure they've seen them entering the adjacent clothing store. Ben and Matthias wave them off and pull up a seat facing vaguely in the direction of Toby and Ari while they wait. Matthias places the newspaper he is holding in the top carrying compartment of the pram. Ben shakes a rattle to keep his young daughter entertained. Toby is already growing bored with his new toy. He sees Ari still sitting by himself and flies his plane over to sit on the bench seat with him. Ari gets up and walks over to the bin a few meters away to discard the foil wrapper from his meal. Matthias is still staring, now with more intent at the bag next to Ari. He points him out to Ben, then walks over and questions Ari, pointing. Is that yours? Ari nods his head and pulls the bag closer, closing it shut. Matthias walks back to Ben, somewhat satisfied. Ari checks his watch again while Toby is flying the plane in his direction. He pretends to casually fire it at Ari, complete with vocal sound effects of full guns blazing. 
our returns to the boy. Toby stops, totally silent, staring. Ari turns back, then pulls out a pen and card from his bag. Toby gets up, leaves the plane on the seat, and crouches down behind the seat on his side. He tears the pin out of an imaginary grenade and starts lobbing them at Ari, again with full sound effects of explosions and some occasional machine gun fire thrown in just in case. Ari turns to try and catch him in the act, but Toby ducks down behind the seat, pretending to be out of his sight. He waits until Ari turns his attention away again. Then he picks up a small stick from the tree behind and silently begins circling around behind the bench seat. Ari is trying to concentrate on what to write in the card. Meanwhile, Toby draws closer, being extra careful not to rouse the enemy. Toby raises the stick like a gun while Ari closes the card and puts it back in his bag. Toby points the stick at Ari's head, but just as he is about to pull the trigger, Ari ducks out of the line of fire. He pulls his hands up in the shape of a gun and points it at Toby, catching him totally off guard. Gotcha. Toby raises his hands in surrender. He has him captured, but is immediately interrupted by Toby's mother. She isn't impressed. Ari lowers his weapon hands. Janet grabs Toby by the wrist and begins marching him away. Toby is desperately trying to escape, pleading, continuing the game. No, Mom. He's gonna get me. Ari moves back to sit down and sees Toby break free from Janet's grasp and jump behind a planter box. Janet lets him go and just keeps walking. Ari keeps one eye on Toby and starts pulling something out of the bag next to him. He unzips a long case and pulls out a black object with a scope on top. He raises it to his eye and aims it at Toby. Interior security control room, day. The security guard knocks over his cup of coffee as he picks up the two-way radio. Exterior shopping mall, day. Toby pokes his head back out to see if Ari is still there. He sees Matthias sprint towards Ari and crash tackle him to the ground. Janet spins around at the noise and runs over towards Toby. Ben rushes over and picks up the long black object to find it's a telescope. Ari looks up at Toby and gives him a little wink to let him know everything is okay. Richard exits the store to come and see what all the commotion is about. Matthias brushes himself off and gives Ari a hand up. Ben inspects the telescope in his hands. It's scratched and broken, with the scope dangling off to one side. Matthias brushes the dirt off the arms of Ari's shirt, and Ben hands back the telescope in apology. They leave him and return to their partners who are waiting at the pram. Interior security control room, day. The coffee spill smudges the newspaper photo of a man being arrested for murder. Exterior shopping mall, day. Matthias pulls out the newspaper from the pram and throws it to the rubbish as they walk off. Janet calls Toby along. This time he follows, still turning back to see if Ari is okay. Ari looks down at the telescope. It's not too bad. A little duct tape should do the trick. On the bench seat sticking out of the bag is a birthday card with a boy in a spaceship. It reads, start the countdown, T minus 10 years old. Exterior family home, backyard, night. Ari's son holds a torch while Ari aims the telescope. He steps away and switches his son the eyepiece for the torch. He turns out the light and they both look out at the stars above. Roll credits, fade to black.